everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be giving some college freshman advice. For those of you who don't know, I just finished my first year at St. Lawrence University and I'm planning on, I haven't declared yet, a double major in English Literature and French. A side note, at the moment I am planning on doing an every other kind of week schedule with one week book related, one week college related. We'll see how that goes. This video will be all about college freshman advice based on my experience. Obviously this does not cover everyone's experience, but I hope that most of this advice will be pretty universal for everyone. I also, when I was making the tips for the video, I felt like I couldn't even cover all the tips, so I've chosen 13 tips that I would like to provide all of you so you can have the most successful freshman year and future years to come. My first tip is to research before registration. Typically before you register, you'll meet with an advisor of some sort and discuss potential classes that you'll be taking in the fall. Depending on your university, you may have required freshman classes to be taking and so those won't be a choice, but you should have some other classes that are a choice and you'll have to go through the course catalog to look at those. Now your advisor will have some helpful advice, but you shouldn't stop with whatever they have to tell you. You should do your own research. You should look at the course catalog by yourself, figure out what you're interested in, what general education requirements you need to meet, if any, what you're interested in for a major, and then after you've kind of got an idea of what classes you want, you should go on Rate My Professor. Rate My Professor is an excellent tool. You'll be able to read about the different professors at your university and get a feel for what kind of professors you have the option of taking a class with. And in other classes, you might not have a choice and Rate My Professor is not helpful in the slightest, but you will thank yourself because you will be surprised by how many people don't do their research before the class and end up with an awful class experience because they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. My second tip is to determine the location of each of your classes. This can help when you're trying to figure out your schedule, but it also will calm your nerves on the first day of school. We had orientation right before school started, so before the first day of classes, I pulled out my map and I figured out where all of my classes were in each building. Now for me, a physical map worked just fine and I was able to plan out my route, partly because St. Lawrence's campus is so small, but for others, you might wanna use Google Maps or Snap Maps or something like that to figure out where everything is because that way I already knew the path I was going to have on that day from building to building and I only had to worry about finding rooms. It took away a lot of stress for someone who gets really stressed about those things and I was able to find the rooms no sweat because I knew where all the buildings were. My third tip is to have a planner. For me, this means a physical planner, but some people like Google Calendar and online planners as well. In college, you get syllabi on the first week of school. It's known as syllabus week. And so after you've received all of your syllabi from all of your classes that first weekend or Friday or whenever you want to, but probably in the first week, you'll want to take all of them and open up your planner if it's physical or online and then fill in all tests, quizzes, assignments, papers, projects, posters, anything of the sort, and then you'll get a feel for when midterms are, when finals are, when your busy weeks are, when your not so busy weeks are, and this will prevent you from missing assignments and also get you in a good shape for organization for the rest of the semester. My fourth tip is to go to office hours. Depending on the university, it might feel like some people never go to office hours or everyone's going to office hours, but regardless of the culture, you should go to office hours because they are so important. Not only do office hours provide you some extra time outside of the classroom to understand concepts and to get a firmer grasp on the material, they also provide an excellent place to form relationships with professors. The relationship between a professor and a student can be very important for reference letters and for things like that, but also to help you in your day-to-day -day life for school. This is how you choose an advisor because typically you'd want to choose an advisor whom you like and is within your department. It also can provide advice for other classes you wanna take, help with scheduling and all of those things. And it is a great idea to get to know professors because you want professors on your side. You want professors to know what kind of a student you are and be willing to help you as much as they can because that will help you in the long run. And some professors are really cool people and you can learn a lot from them. So that's also a bonus to having different relationships with different professors. My fifth tip is to not skip class. Some universities I know, it seems like everyone's skipping because there's large lecture halls and you feel like you won't get noticed, but you don't know what you're gonna miss in that day of class. Maybe that's the day they take attendance. 
Maybe that's the day they give out hints for the next test or quiz. And if you don't have friends in that class, you're screwed. Even if you do have friends in that class, they might not remember what the professor said or they might not have written it down. And then you'll be at a disadvantage for the next test or exam. So don't skip class. It also will help you with your relationship with your professor because they will see you showing up to class every single day. Obviously, if you're sick, that's a completely different scenario, but try to show up to class as much as you can. My sixth tip is this first semester does count. This isn't true for all universities. I know some do shadow grading where you can choose to not have your first semester count as actual grades, but at least at St. Lawrence University, your grades do count and they are a part of your GPA. A lot of the classes you'll take in your first few semesters are lower level courses. And so these courses are easier, whatever that means to you. I've known some people to start off the first semester and be like, it's okay, I'm adjusting, whatever happens, whatever happens and then they finish their first semester and they don't have the GPA they exactly wanted. And the rest of their college career is an uphill battle to get the GPA they wanted. Don't start off on the wrong foot in your first semester of school. Work hard from day one because more than likely you're paying for this education or your parents are. This is not a free education and your grades do matter. Work hard and don't be, because this will prevent you from hating yourself your junior year when you're taking an upper level class and you need that little bit of cushion to fall a little bit. My seventh tip is sleep is important. I know some people pull all-nighters. I, for one, never pulled an all-nighter, but I know a lot of people do. I typically got seven to eight hours of sleep every night, and this was because I knew how to organize and prioritize my time. I led a very busy schedule. I was involved in tons of extracurriculars, and I was in classes, and I had tons of things to do, but I made sure that I was getting the sleep I needed every night because I know that I can't focus in class if I haven't gotten the sleep I needed. And you're more likely to get sick if you're not sleeping enough. And so this is really important that you make sure you're getting enough sleep. My eighth tip is not really a tip, but I know a lot of people get nervous about this, is the freshman 15. And I'm here to tell you it's avoidable, but also it's okay if you gain weight. This is a huge transition. You are not eating the way you used to. You now have a dining hall. You probably have an ice cream machine at your disposal every night. And so it's gonna take some self-control, but if you gain weight, don't beat yourself up about it. You just underwent one of the most major changes in your life. My ninth tip is wear whatever you want to wear. People act like all college students wear are sweatpants, sweatshirts, leggings, and large t-shirts, and they don't ever, ever dress up. Well, that's not true, or at least it's not true at St. Lawrence University. I saw people wearing skirts and dresses, slacks, button downs, ties, bow ties, you name it, they were wearing it every single day. And it wasn't just one or two people were dressing up every day, it was different people dressing up on different days. I personally feel most comfortable wearing when I'm wearing jeans or a skirt or a dress because it makes me feel put together and ready to take on the day. But some people feel most capable in sweatpants. It's just a difference that we have. And so you're not alone if you're wearing sweatpants and you're also not alone if you're wearing jeans. My 10th tip is to make your dorm room or whatever area you're living in a comfortable space for you. You want to feel good when you wake up in the morning and you look around your room or when you come in after a long day of classes, you want to feel like it's a safe space. Because much of the college environment around you, you can't control, but you should be able to control your room or at least your portion of the room. I brought special things from home, including some of my favorite books and trinkets. I also made sure that I had pictures from home and all of my decorations made me happy. I'm sure if you saw my previous video, which I will link in the description down below, you saw my dorm tour and I would definitely not get an award for being an interior designer, but my room made me happy and that's what matters. I felt safe and good in my room every time I walked in. My 11th tip is to be you. College is the time to reinvent yourself, to make a new first impression, to become a different person, but you should be happy with this person. So college is a chance to remake yourself, but don't remake yourself into someone you don't wanna be and realize months down the road that you don't like the person that you've become and you don't like the people who you hang around with because of the person you've become. I know this is easier said than done and sometimes you fall into traps and you just wanna make friends so badly, but make sure you're happy with the person you're being 
and stand up for yourself. Put yourself first because you're the person that matters the most. My 12th tip is to go to everything and anything. College has tons of events and I'm not talking about parties. I'm talking about writer series, lectures, interesting luncheons with guest speakers and workshops. Go to them all. Go to the ones that interest you, even if none of your friends think they're interesting. You might get a free lunch out of them or meet someone really cool. You'll be able to network and learn a lot. These opportunities will provide you with even more opportunities and you'll be able to have a much more expansive and enriched college experience. My 13th and final tip is a little bit of a downer, but I just wanted to be realistic. It's okay not to love college. I thought I would love college. I've been waiting for college the majority of my education. And when I got to college and about the third week of school, I realized I didn't love it. And this is something I've had to come to terms with. I know it sounds dramatic, but for someone who's been waiting for college their entire life, this was like a slap in the face times 100 million. That does not mean you can't try to find some bright things. For me, that was going to the reading room on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. when there was really only one or two people in there and studying for four hours by myself. Or it was making myself a cup of hot tea after a long day of classes and sitting by my window looking out as the snow fell. Just finding those small things that made me happy were what counted. If you can't find anything to make you happy and you've tried, I'm here to tell you it's okay to transfer. As a wise friend told me, it's just four years of your life. Like any other four years of your life, it's gonna have its highs, it's gonna have its lows. Thank you so much for watching my video. I am so glad you stuck around to the end. If you enjoyed it, you should give this video a like and subscribe. If you have any video recommendations, book related or college related, please leave them down in the comments below. I will see you all next week.